everyone. Colin Kanad here for Woodwork Web. Today we're going to do something we've never done before. And I know we never do that here on Woodwork Web, do we? But you know, I work pretty hard trying to give you a variety of builds and, and different projects so that you get a wider variety of things that you can try yourself. And today, once again, we've got something unique. When I'm building things, especially things that I haven't built before, uh, sometimes I will make a model. And this is a chair. This is the model of a chair that I never, I made the model and I didn't really like it. It's all made to scale. Uh, I just didn't really like the chair that much. But let's show you a close up. It's kind of a cool thing. And all this is, is a little lawn chair. And you've probably seen these chairs. Uh, typically there's a uh, a cloth that runs around here from these two sides here and of course this is where you sit in here so there you're looking at it head on but it's just a little working model and I wanted to see what this design of this chair would be like I never did make the chair but I kept the model because this one I for some reason I just kind of like that and today we're going to do something similar to this today we're going to build something called a trebuchet. And if you lived in, in medieval times and you wanted to storm a castle and break down the walls, this is the machine that you would bring to do that. And basically what it does is it throws rocks at, at concrete walls or brick walls, stone walls, in an attempt to break them down. But I've always had a fascination with this kind of a a model and we're going to make a small one and really all it's going to be is kind of a conversational piece to put on a coffee table or something like that. I'm going to use my mag switch jig here and if you haven't seen these these are just magnets and when you twist them like this it drops the magnet down onto a steel base and you can't move it it's rigid on there and you release them basically just raises and lowers the magnets so that you can move it around. Now I want to cut this wood that I have here I want to cut it at 3 16 so I'm using one of my bars my measuring bars here and I'm just touching the teeth right at the outward edge and I'll lock that down like that. Now what I'm going to do now is if I drop this blade down so that it's just barely above the wood, I can bring it in here, touch it up, so I can bring my table or my fence in here, just touch that so that it's just touching, there it is, just touching that screw, and now I know that the wood that I push through there is going to be exactly 3 sixteenths of an inch. Now, I don't have an awful lot of this wood, so I don't want to waste it. What I've done is I've installed my seven and a quarter inch uh, circular saw blade in my table saw so that I get a finer kerf, and I'm now going to rip a bunch of this wood at three quarters of an inch, and I'll just use the fence for that. My lovely sister-in-law picked up these two boxes of mixed veneers and bits and pieces, but check out these little wheels. These will be perfect on our trebuchet. Let's get started now and start cutting some of these beams for the uprights here. So this is my base, and you can look at, you can see that I've got two different sizes for the base, and that's because I want the wheels to be able to turn on the front. 
And what I discovered, because what I want to do now is put a couple of braces in here on each side. But what I discovered was that my 3060, and it's clear so it's hard to see, but my 30 degree, 60 degree works perfectly in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take all of my pieces that I have here, and I'm going to take them to the miter saw and I'm going to gang cut them at 60 and at 30 and then just connect them all up. Now because these pieces are small and small pieces can be dangerous to work with I've decided to clamp them because I do want to cut them all exactly at the same time so that they're all identical. Okay, I've just mixed up some 5 minute epoxy glue and I have to use epoxy here because we're gluing end grain to long grain and ordinary um, yellow glue just doesn't work very well on that so we're going to use some epoxy on there and we'll just put a little bit on each side we don't need very much here and that's why I pre pre-finished these because if I do slop a little bit of uh, glue on there uh, it's not, it won't matter, it won't block the finish, it won't mar the finish. Okay, so that's exactly where I want right there. And now, let's see if we can... There we go. Do another one up here. Perfect. Okay. Can feel that glue setting up. There we go. Well, I think we can do a little bit of assembly now. And because I'm gluing long grain to long grain, I don't even need to use that 5 minute epoxy that I was using before. I'm just using yellow glue will work just fine for what we're doing here. So I went ahead and finished the carcass assembly and what I'm going to do right now is to install the wheels. And the front wheels, there's one of them, they want to turn so I'm going to put them on an axle so that they can actually move a little bit. So all I'm going to do now is drill some holes. So there's my little axle and I've just drilled a couple of holes in it and I'm just going to use some nails, 
just because they're easy, I can paint the ends of them black. And they... Jeepers, I'm not very good at hammering, am I? Now the idea of the front wheels, of course... Oh, that's perfect. That's good. That'll move back and forth like that. Okay, let's flip that up. Okay, now we just need to put the uh, throwing arm on. Okay, now most of the throwing arms that you see, they have like a sling down here, and they have a big weight at the top, and often that weight, sometimes it's a sack with rocks in it, sometimes it's like a little wooden box with rocks in it, and that's what they're showing. What I've also seen is just rocks, I think, in certain places they may have just put a big rock and just lashed it on there and I have a I collect petrified wood and I have a big pail of it this is my box of petrified wood and that one's clearly too big but all of these pieces in here are there may be something well, this one's brilliant. This is figured. I should show you a close-up of that. This is figured petrified wood. This is just brilliant. Now, that might be a nice piece. We'll try that one. We'll put some water on that one and see what that looks like. I think I like this one the best. It's not the biggest, but I think we'll try that one. Well, we're ready for the final assembly. And I've put the little sling on the end, and I fastened our petrified rock to the bottom. And let's just put this little axle through here. Well, this concludes our video on making the model trebuchet, and I'm really pleased the way this turned out. Uh, I used Gary Oak, and I've just put one coat of Seikos on, and it just kind of brought out the texture of the wood. I don't want it ever to be glossy. I might put another coat on. We'll see what this one looks like after it dries for a couple days. Um, but it just looks great. It's one of those woodworking projects that you really need to see in person. It's so hard to really take a picture of it or a video. It looks really cool. And it's just about model making. That's all this is about. If you've got something large that you want to make, you could start off by making a model of it. Uh, and it's just a really cool way of, of doing different kinds of, uh, of builds. So, I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Don't forget, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and stay tuned because we've got lots more builds coming.